Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. I have this M5 Camera X from M5 Stack that I flashed with the sketch using the Arduino IDE. It's a cool project where the M5 Camera X transmits video to the M5 Stack Core Basic over Wi-Fi. Now, I want to flash the M5 Camera X back to the factory out-of-box firmware. This creates a Wi-Fi access point that you join your PC to, then you browse to the IP address of the access point where you can see the video output. But this uses the ESP IDF environment, and I've never done this before. So let's try using ESP IDF for the first time. The docs on m5stack.com for the M5 Camera X have this firmware link that takes me to their GitHub repository. Step one is follow this link to the Espressif website. Look for the links in the description below. This reads as though they have ESP IDF all worked out for Windows. There is some cautionary notice about the length of the path where you install ESP IDF. Also, no spaces in the path. Okay, hold it right here. When I originally followed these directions, I downloaded the latest version of ESP IDF. That was version 4.3. And when I went to build the M5 Camera X Wi-Fi AP project, I got one error after another. Undeclared constants and deprecated file version errors. Then I realized that each of these M5 stack firmware packages are prepared for a specific version of the ESP IDF. For the package I want to flash, I need version 4.0. So let's do it right with the right version for this instance. I go to the release page and find the 4.0.3 link, download the installer, when we run the installer, we get to choose the version. I'm selecting 4.0.3. Now, if I use my default document path, this is redirected to my OneDrive in the cloud. This could slow things down a bit when compiling code if the bits I'm working with aren't cached locally and need to be downloaded. I choose to keep the install path simple by pointing it to c colon backslash ESP dash IDF. There's also the install path for the tools. I choose c colon backslash Espressif for this. In hindsight, if one were to install multiple different versions of ESP IDF, you might consider appending the version number to these paths. Now the setup program is downloading a gigabyte of data, so this will take some time. Let's go peek into the C drive. It seems the Espresso folder contains the installation source, and the ESP IDF folder is the target installation folder. You're going to need over 3 gigabytes of free space on your target drive. I'm really glad I didn't choose to put this on my OneDrive in the cloud. That would have slowed things down considerably. Finally, we're done. Now we have choices. We can run the Eclipse environment. We can run PowerShell. Or we can use the command prompt. The docs for installing the M5 Camera X firmware mention using the terminal. So I'm going with command prompt to keep things simple. We will accept the antivirus exclusions here as well. Now the ESP IDF paths are added to the Windows path environment variable. I'm sort of wondering how to proceed from here. IDF.py has replaced the make command, apparently. These instructions on the M5 camera page don't get me from point A to point B, so it looks like I need to blend the M5 stack instructions with the Espressif ESP IDF instructions. Here goes. Let's download the zip file from the M5 stack camera repository. I have extracted the zip 
file to a folder named M5 camera on my C drive. In the command prompt, I need to change directory to the project folder for the factory firmware, Wi-Fi AP. But I like the Wi-Fi STA project better. This one joins your Wi-Fi network and hosts a web page with a video output from the camera that you can view with your browser. So we'll change directory to C colon backslash M5 camera backslash Wi-Fi backslash Wi-Fi STA. Now you run the idf.py menu config command. This creates a menu where we can select the camera model and the M5 stack instructions inform how to configure the PS RAM on M5 Camera X. Enter takes you into menu options. Use the up down arrows to highlight items, spacebar to select, escape or backspace to go back to the main menu. When you're done, use the arrow keys to go down to the bottom and highlight save. Hit enter to save. We have to go edit the main C file in the main folder within this project directory and add our Wi-Fi SSID and password. Save the main C file. Now it's time to run idf.py build command. This takes time to build your project and much like compiling in the Arduino IDE, this is where the errors would be displayed. Whew. We made it through clean this time. Never give up and use your instincts to babble your way through. I'm glad I didn't give up after the first try with all the errors I encountered. I have hooked up the M5 Camera X to my PC and we can see the serial port is named COM10. Now we run idf.py. The port parameter is dash P with the name of the serial port COM10 and the flash command to upload the project to the M5 Camera X. Great, it has successfully uploaded. Now we run the idf.py port com10 monitor command to open the terminal to receive the serial output from the M5 Camera X. We can see it connect to Wi-Fi and get an IP address. I'm a bit far from the Wi-Fi router in this room, so let's go out to the living room for more fun. I have the M5 Camera X hooked to one laptop with Foxterm reading the serial output of the camera. On my Acer 2-in-1 tablet, I'm opening the web page to view the video output from M5 Camera X. Let's say hello to the boys. This is Bob and Jimmy. Here is the living room work area with two workstations arranged on the west wall. This is satisfying to have learned how to use ESP IDF. There are some other interesting possibilities in this M5 stack camera repository that are using ESP IDF version 3. Now that I understand ESP IDF a little better, I feel like I can try some of these other firmware options on my M5 camera X. I hope this video has helped you to understand the ESP IDF environment better. Leave a comment down below on what you want to build with the ESP IDF now that you've got started. Give this video a like. And before you go watch more of my M5 stack videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.